In this video, we'll be going through the excess earnings method. So in a business valuation context, the excess earnings method can be used to value intangible assets and also to value small private businesses in cases where other methods cannot be used. So let's look at the framework. So what we'll do is we are trying to value the firm. So of course, the firm would have fixed assets, working capital, and also intangible assets. So all these three added up together gives us the firm value. Now, of course, for the fixed assets and working capital, we'll try to get the fair value of it. But the problem usually comes in valuing the intangible assets. So what we'll do is we will first start off with the firm's normalized earnings. And of course, we will typically get the estimated normalized earnings for the coming year. And then what we'll do is we will uh, use the re required return for the fixed assets and the working capital to work out what is the minimum amount in dollar terms or in currency terms that we will need to compensate okay, for the capital invested in fixed assets and working capital. So in other words, uh, I will multiply the fixed asset value by the required return for fixed assets. So this will give us the required earnings to provide the required return for fixed assets. So in a way, it's like a charge on the normalized earnings. And we'll do the same thing with working capital to get the required earnings to provide the required return for working capital. So in other words, there is a charge of on your capital Okay, when we use the money to fund the purchase of fixed assets and working capital. Now, once we have these two, we'll subtract it from the normalized earnings and that gives us the excess earnings. So since I have subtracted uh, the two main uh, sources here, okay, where we use the capital on, so whatever is left, which is the excess earnings, will be attributable to the intangible assets. So in this case, since we are able to link the excess earnings to the intangible assets, so then we will also be able to value the intangible assets, okay, and we will take a constant growth assumption. So in this case, the intangible assets will be the excess earnings for the coming period. And then we'll divide it by a cap rate, okay? And this would be K minus G. And K here would be the required return on the intangible assets, which will be higher compared to fixed assets and working capital. And G here would be the growth rate of the excess earnings. And this would be the constant growth rate that uh, we will assume. Now, of course, the only drawback behind this method is that getting the required return is usually a very subjective exercise, okay? And the same goes for the value of K is very subjective to determine. Now, let's look at one sample calculation. So we have a working capital, and uh, which is 300,000, and fixed asset, 700,000. So of course, uh, where we can, we get the fair value of these uh, numbers. Then uh, we have the normalized earnings for the coming year, 120,000. And then we have the required return for working capital, which is uh, 6%. Required return for fixed assets is 10%. The growth rate of excess earnings is 5%. And discount rate for intangible assets is 14%. So let's say we are trying to work out the value of this firm using the excess earnings method. So what we will first do is based on the normalized earnings, we will then minus the required earnings to actually generate the required return for working capital and fixed assets. So first off, uh, we have 300,000 working capital. So how much uh, required earnings do we need to cover for this? So we'll multiply that by 6%. So of course, uh, that gives us uh, 18,000. Okay, so that's the minimum, that's the required earnings I need to generate, okay, to cover for this uh, using uh, the use of working capital. Then uh, for fixed assets, that would be 10%. So that would be 70,000. So in total, we will need to generate 88,000 in order to uh, cover or to use the working capital and fixed assets. So my normalized earnings here would be 120,000. So in this case, uh, the excess earnings, okay, for the coming year, I'll denote it as uh, EE sub 1. So this will be the normalized earnings, 120,000, okay, minus uh, the sum of the two here, which is 88,000. So my excess earnings uh, for the coming year is estimated to be 32,000. And this amount will be attributable to the intangible assets. So by doing that, so the value of my intangible assets, so the value of the intangible assets would then be equals to the 
excess earnings for the coming year and then we'll divide by the required return for intangibles that will be 14% minus the growth rate on the excess earnings that will be 5% so that will be about 355,556 so now to get the value of the firm so we'll just take the working capital plus the fixed assets plus the value of the intangible assets All right so that will give us uh, one about 1.355 million so in total that will be about 1355.6k okay or in other words this is about 1.4 million okay so that's how we value the firm using the access earnings method so just be careful uh, whether the normalized earnings is for the year just ended if it's for the year just ended then that would be e0 that would be uh, then this would be earnings in year 0 so that means the number we get here would be the excess earnings in year 0 so when you do the calculation you will have to take 32000 and multiply by 1 plus the growth rate which is 5% okay so that is if uh, it's the earnings for the year just ended so always read carefully and check uh, for which period would that earnings be for?